so I'm briefly going to look at the relationship between fractions, decimals and percentages to help develop skills in moving between the three. There's going to be a specific focus on those values that you need to know the fraction, decimal and percentage equivalent of without using a calculator. You need to be comfortable with the basics of equivalent fractions, that is, writing fractions that have the same value. I'm going to begin by looking at converting decimals to fractions, and I'll do this by looking at the base 10 number system. If we look at the structure of the base 10 number system, we have a series of columns, which I've labelled like so. 1, 10, 100, 1000, before the decimal point, and after the decimal point we have a tenth, one hundredth, one thousandth, and so on. We'll begin with 0 0.1. Well, what that means is one tenth. We've got one in the tenth column. So 0 0.1 is equal to one tenth. Similarly, if we had 0 0.2, well, that's two tenths, because there's two lots of one tenth. Or there's two in the tenth column. And we can continue this with 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, all the way down to 0 0.9, which we can write as 9 tenths. So we have nine fractions, all written as tenths. But for some of these fractions, we can actually simplify them. In the case of 2 tenths, 4 tenths, 6 tenths, and 8 tenths, the numerator and denominator are both even. And so we can divide the top and bottom by 2 to simplify each fraction. So 2 tenths simplifies to a fifth. 4 tenths simplifies to 2 fifths. 6 tenths simplifies to 3 fifths. And 8 tenths simplifies to 4 fifths. The other fraction that can be simplified is 5 tenths. And this can be simplified to a half by dividing the numerator and the denominator by five. Remember that for equivalent fractions, the relationship, the ratio between the numerator and the denominator remains the same. So if we look at five tenths and a half, we can see that the denominator in both cases is twice that of the numerator. If we look at two tenths and one fifth, we can see that the denominator in both cases, is five times greater than the numerator. Now let's look at decimals to two decimal places. That is, there are two digits after the decimal point. If we start with 0 0.01, well, that means there's one in the hundredth column. So 0 0.01 must mean one hundredth. 0 0.02 means two hundredth, and so on, all the way up to 0 0.09 which is equal to nine hundredths. Following this pattern, the next number must be ten hundredths, which we can write as 0 0.10, but also notice that the one is in the tenths column. So we could also write ten hundredths as one tenth. Then of course we'd have 0 0.11, which would be eleven hundredths, and so on. So if we had 0 0.53, that would be 53 hundredths. Again, notice that we can simplify some of these fractions. If, for example, we look at 2 over 100, that could be simplified to 1 50th by dividing the top and bottom by 2. So 2 hundredths is an equivalent fraction of 1 over 50, where the denominator is 50 times greater than the numerator. Let's go back to our first set of data, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and so on. Let's put a naught in the hundredths column. We can now write all of these decimals as fractions out of a hundred. So 0 0.1, which is one tenth, can be written as 0 0.10, which is equal to 10 over a hundred. 0 0.2, which is 2 tenths, can be written as 0 0.20, which is 20 over 100. 
0 0.30, can be written as 30 over 100, and so on. So for each decimal, we're beginning to build up a series of equivalent fractions. Writing decimals as fractions out of 100 is going to help us when we start looking at percentages later on in the video. So we'll come back to this later. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, I said there was going to be a bit of an emphasis on non-calculator work. And there are some values that you need to be comfortable with. That is, you just need to know them. And that will come with practice. For example, if we take 0.25, well, that's 25 over 100. And that can be simplified to 1 over 4, 1 quarter by dividing the top and bottom by 25. So 25 over 100 is an equivalent fraction to a quarter because the denominator is four times greater than the numerator. Similarly, if we look at 0 0.75, well that's 75 over 100, and that can be simplified to three quarters by dividing the top and bottom by 25. So 75 over 100, is an equivalent fraction to three quarters. And the denominator is four thirds greater than the numerator. Also, if we had 0 0.50, well, that would be 50 over 100. But 0 0.50 is also five tenths. So 50 over 100 is equal to five tenths, which we also know can simplify to a half. So we have three fractions, 50 hundredths, 5 tenths, and a half. And they're all equivalent because the denominator is twice the numerator. So you need to be aware of these decimals and also different ways in which those decimals may be written. So be alert that 0 0.50 is the same as 0 0.5, which is equal to 50 over 100 or 5 over 10, which is equal to a half. Now let's go to three decimal places. If I had 0 0.001, well, we have one in the thousandth column. So 0 0.001 is one thousandth. If I had 0 0.009, then we'd have nine thousandths. After that, we would have ten thousandths, and that is 0 0.010, which is also the same as one hundredth. And that makes sense, doesn't it? If I had 10 thousandths and I divided the top and bottom by 10, we would end up with one hundredth. So 10 thousandths and one hundredth are equivalent. But taking this further, I could have 0 0.314, which would be 314 over 1,000. Again, we can simplify this as 314 and 1,000 are both even, we can divide the numerator and the denominator by two. And this gives us a fraction of 157 over 500. And finally, if I had say 0 0.409, that's 409 over 1,000. This fraction doesn't simplify. I now want to look at writing fractions as decimals. The focus again is looking at non calculator values. But quite simply, if I wanted to find the decimal equivalent of any fraction, I divide the numerator of the fraction by the denominator of the fraction. So, for example, a half is 1 divided by 2. And if I was to put that into a calculator, I get the answer 0 0.5. Similarly, if I put 1 divided by 4 into a calculator to find a quarter, we would end up with 0.25. Now we covered these earlier, but again, these are ones that you need to be comfortable with without having to think about them. You should know that a half is 0.5 or a quarter is 0.25. Two other fractions you need to be aware of in terms of their decimal equivalent are one third and two thirds. If I put a third, or if I type in 1 divided by 3 into a calculator, I get 0 0.33333 recurring, which I can write as 
0.3 with a dot over the 3 to signify that the 3 is repeating itself after the decimal point. Similarly, if I put in 2 divided by 3 to get a decimal equivalent for 2 thirds, I get 0.6666666 recurring, which I can write as 0.6 with a little dot over it to say that the 6 is repeating itself after the decimal point. So you might need to be aware of these from a non-calculator point of view. But if you are using a calculator and you need to find the decimal equivalent, it is quite simply typing in the numerator and dividing it by the denominator. So that's fractions and decimals. The only thing we need to look at now is percentages. Now, percentages are fractions out of 100. That is, the denominator is 100. So wherever you see a fraction over 100, you can very easily write this fraction as a percentage. Let's go back to the first set of decimals, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and so on. If we look at 0.1, well, we wrote 0.1 as being equal to 1 over 10, 1 tenth, because there's 1 in the tenths column. But we also wrote it as a fraction out of 100, and that was 10 over 100. So as a percentage, 10 over 100 is 10%, the 10 referring to the numerator of the fraction, and the percent sign meaning out of 100. And we can repeat this for all the other decimals. So 0 0.2, which is 20 over 100, we can write as 20%. 0 0.3, which is 30 over 100, which we can write as 30%, and so on. Again, you need to be aware of particular percentages. In this set of numbers, we have 0 0.5, which is equal to a half, which is equal to 50%. So you need to be comfortable with saying, well, a half is 50% or 50% is a half. Looking at this set of decimals, 0 0.01, 0 0.02 and so on. Well, these can be very easily written as percentages. So 0 0.01 is 1%, 0 0.02 is 2%, 0 0.09 is 9%, 0 0.10 we already know is 10%. 0.11 is 11% and 0.53 is 53%. Looking at 0.25 and 0.75, as mentioned before, you need to be comfortable with knowing that 0.25 is equal to a quarter and 0.75 is equal to three quarters. But 0.25 is 25 over 100. So 0.25 is the same as 25%. 0.75 is 75 over 100. So 0.75 must be 75%. Therefore, this means that 25% is equal to a quarter and 75% is equal to three quarters. The two challenging fractions are one third and two thirds. It might take a little while to get your head around what I'm going to say but hopefully it might begin to make sense. One third is equal to 0 0.3 recurring or 0 0.3333333 and so on. If we had 0 0.33, that would be 33% based upon what we've just been doing earlier on. But we actually have 0 0.3333 recurring. So that would be 33.33333 recurring percent. Remember that this recurring decimal was generated by dividing 1 by 3 because we were trying to find a third as a decimal. Looking at this percentage of 33.33 recurring, the 0 0.33 recurring is being generated by dividing 1 by 3. So this 0 0.33 recurring is the equivalent of a third. So we can write this percentage as 33 and a third percent. This also applies to two thirds. If we just had 0 0.66, well, that would be 66 over 100, which will be 66%. But we actually have 
0.66666 recurring. So this would be 66.66666 recurring percent. Remember that the recurring decimal was generated by dividing 2 by 3 because we wanted to find the decimal equivalent of 2 thirds. So when we look at 66.666 recurring, this 0.66 recurring is also being generated by dividing 2 by 3, or effectively the equivalent of 2 thirds. So we can write this percentage as 66 and 2 thirds percent. Now that might take a little while to get your head around, but for the time being it is useful just to get to know this. So it's useful to know that 1 third is equal to 0 0.3 recurring, which is equal to 33 and a third percent, and 2 thirds is equal to 0 0.6 recurring, which is equal to 66 and 2 thirds percent. So here's a list of fractions, decimals and percentages that you need to familiarise yourself with. This will come with time and with practising different kinds of questions involving fractions, decimals and percentages. I think the key to this, however, is being able to write the fractions as equivalent fractions out of 10 and out of 100, as this links to our base 10 number system. So, for example, if I had the fraction a half and I couldn't remember the decimal or the percentage equivalent, well, if I multiply the denominator, which is 2, if I multiply that by 5, I end up with 10. So that also means I have to multiply the numerator by 5, which is equal to 5. So a half is equal to 5 tenths. 5 tenths must equal 0 0.5, because the 5 goes in the tenths column. Similarly, I know that if I multiply the 2 by 50, I get 100. So if I multiply the denominator by 50, I have to multiply the numerator by 50. So I end up with 50 over 100. And that I can write as 50%. And I can repeat this process for some of the other fractions. But that's all I'm going to be covering on fractions, decimals and percentages at this time. I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching.